Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm chatting this afternoon with Jennifer. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. And avoiding the heat waves and the COVIDs and all the other stuff that's going on out in the world? Staying healthy, thankfully. Thankfully, everyone is healthy, so it's good, good to say. That's great. <laughs> well, Jennifer, for folks that don't know who you are, where you are, what you do, why don't you give us the background? Yeah, so uh, my name is Jennifer Mason. I work at Planet Technologies. I am the Vice President of Workforce Learning and Transformation. So I do everything end user adoption, training, learning, uh, transforming your workforce. So if you've been following the news, if you've been paying attention, there's a lot going on right now with workforce transformation and where things are going to be in the next uh, five to 10 years and how automation is taking over and what are we going to do. And so for the past uh, five or six years, that's really been my focus of helping people understand where we at today, where are we going, and how do we get there? Um, and, you know, focused around technology, because that's where we're at. So um, really doing that. So we have a couple of products around that, a lot of uh, what we call human services, which is, you know, the fancy word for consulting. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the services you provide are human related services. Yes, but yeah. Well, when you, when you bundle it with a product, so you've got product plus human services together, it's, it's, not really consulting because I, I don't know human services products it's, it's consulting plus products together equals you know adoption services with so humans really I know well it's you can't forget humans. that <laughs> <laughs> well and so in hell you've been an MVP for how long now I just got my nine nine year puck Okay. Yeah, the, the, uh, the little pucks, if, if people don't know, every the slider, year you get a little, the puck. That's a little right. thing that goes on a thing, and they call it a puck. <laughs> yep. Oh, so that's right. So I was trying to remember. So for some reason, I thought you were a year before me, so you were a 2012 person as well. Yeah, I think I think we were the same year, maybe. Yeah, it was maybe? January January 2012. I'm pretty sure I'm nine year, because my husband, maybe, I don't think I'm 10 year. Maybe I'm 11. I don't. I don't know. Somewhere between. <laughs> see, see, that's the, that, that's just the reality, people. That like I, I was trying to remember, like uh, you know, just uh, uh, being. Now, of course, I we've worked remotely for a long time. We all travel, all that kind of stuff. But I've just lost. I have no concept of time anymore. I, I have zero concept of time for the last year. I have no idea what day it is, what month it is. Half the time, which state I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what time of day it is. Often I'll be like, you know, hey, it's time to lunch. And I look at my, I'm in, uh, I look at the window well because I'm in the basement and it's dark. I'm like, oh. And I realize I, I kind of missed lunch and dinner. And yeah, so uh, I think I heard my wife yelling down to me like five hours ago or something. But uh, yeah, they, they so, for ignoring her. <laughs> and then you've, all, you've also recently been, uh, you, you're part of the RD program as well. Yeah, super excited about that. So I just recently got awarded the Microsoft RD. So very, very excited to kind of step into that program, um, see what that's all about, be part of that. And so I was really honored to be accepted into that group. And so looking forward to that. I think we've had a couple of meetings so far and I'm already finding lots of value in it. So have you had the question of somebody out from the community said, oh, congratulations on your new Microsoft job or, or anything uh, like <laughs> Yes, everyone at work thought I got a new job. And so I, I guess because I had uh, known what the title was and I had whatever, I tried to write it in a way and I followed all the guidelines for writing it in a way and people are like, oh, congratulations, we'll miss you. And I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, I was like, oh man, I guess people don't know what that is. <laughs> well, they don't. And it's, it's, uh, it, it, and again, it's, it's, I like the kind of the, the short description. It's that we are uh, unpaid advisors for yes. Microsoft leadership team. And there's about, I don't know what the current count is when I. 223, so I, I think this year. Oh, so it went, it went up. So there it were. It went up just a little bit. It was, uh, I think, 175 or 177 um, two years ago when I joined. Um, so yeah, they've increased that, which is fantastic. But what kind of, how do you interpret the difference between the MVP program and the RDs? Like as, as far as what we're asked to do, and I'll let you use your own words to kind of define that. 
Um, so I think uh, hands-on and technical would be the MVP. So an MVP, I think you're going to get um, in your community contributions and then your engagement with the product team is going to be very, very much hands-on in the product, very deep. And then at the RD level, it's definitely more strategic and uh, cross product. So it's not necessarily uh, deep into one product or one area, what, where it may go deep into a product or area, but it's gonna start at a very strategic level um, and, and kind of take on that focus of it. And so those are kind of the differences I'm seeing so far and, and how they describe it um, as well when they talk about the differences. So um, the, that's yeah. kind of the, the big differences I've seen so far. Well, the one of those for people that aren't familiar with the programs too, is that you know, the MVP is an award. So it's a recognition from Microsoft for uh, people who are going kind of above and beyond for the community. And so, uh, and generally the, well, not generally, the things that those that we're, we're doing to become an MVP are things which are above and beyond like what our day jobs are. So most of us, and Jennifer and I have known each other for a long time. We co-authored the book time. together and, and we, for, through all the conferences that we used to attend. I remember those. Uh, <laughs> those events what going out was like <laughs> I know, going out to dinner I just there's a lot of like Facebook posts of three years ago five years ago look at this great picture where we ate food in restaurants where we were actually sitting down yeah um, but uh, no it, uh, so it's a it's a recognition it's an award for what you've done the year previous whereas RD is very it's different it's uh, you know it it's uh, you know, just over 200 people that are advisors that are selected and it's a it's a much more detailed interview process and selection process for that and we are a resource we're providing guidance to um, sometimes where uh, we, we join together to write uh, content and things for white papers for internal use only for Microsoft executives it's kind of a hotline where we say hey we've identified this issue we have this concern of the way that Microsoft is you know the wording in a new ad campaign or uh, product changes that made and how it impacts our business because almost all of us are business owners or, or you know senior people within uh, partners in the ecosystem and so to provide that direct feedback to Microsoft, it's a great opportunity to do that. But it's a, it, it, while it's great to be recognized and be selected, you know, it's, that's the, I look at the primary difference. It's not an award. It's a, like, we're, we're doing stuff. We're required to participate and then not get paid for it. <laughs> it's an honor. <laughs> it's an honor. That's right. But, uh, well, uh, so how long have you been with Plant now? I have five years. I just hit my five-year mark on July 1st. So it's exciting stuff. I love it. It's a great, a great company. I'm having a blast out there. Love the people, love the job, love everything I get to do. So it doesn't even feel like work. Um, so it's fantastic. So. So another one of the planet is one of those companies where, again, you know, a lot of familiar faces. I don't know how many MVPs that you have working there now. Right now it's just me. So a lot oh, really? of our MVPs have transitioned over to Microsoft. So a couple of them have left and gone off to Microsoft. And we have a lot of transition um, just with different things. So the MVPs that we had, the majority of them transitioned. Um, I think they're all at Microsoft right now. And then um, we had MCMs and then they got rid of that program. Right. And so- Well, they now, still own that title. And they yes, should they still, still, and still have the title. And yeah. Yes, and they should because they're still brilliant. Um, and people yeah, don't know so, what that is, MCMs are the Microsoft Certified Masters. And yeah, these were the folks that, uh, you know, I always like the way I described the MCMs. So like when, when you see Microsoft training material, like for, the, you know, the developer and admin guides for SharePoint, for example, the MCMs are usually like the people that helped write those materials. Um, it's the people that Microsoft turns to to ask questions about how their technology is actually being implemented and, and used. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant people. So, um, I, yeah, I can't even imagine. I couldn't have sat for that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's uh, I remember with a few of them because uh, my former team when I was at Microsoft were did a lot of that training. So people like Mike Watson and Bill Bear and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, that, that did a lot of that. So I, I got to meet some of those MCMs before I really understood what it was. Um, but what, what's the stuff that what are kind of the popular topics? What are the things that you're, you're known for that you're passionate about uh, in the Microsoft stack? 
So in the Microsoft stack, I am pretty much anything without syntax and semicolons. So most of my sessions, I tell people that I'm allergic to syntax and semicolons. So that's kind of my thing. So anything you can do with uh, SharePoint out of the box is where you'll find me um, speaking. As of lately, it's been a lot about user adoption um, and productivity and really aligning everyday business solutions with um, how do I make life better inside of tools? How can I improve? productivity so how can I you know spend five minutes learning something in Outlook that's gonna save me ten minutes a day and how do I get that productivity and then how does that actually translate to saving a business money and how does that translate to improving the quality of people like your your everyday life quality work quality life quality so um, spending a lot of time doing with adoption and different things there and so that kind of aligns with it because I get to help people identify you know what's in it for me when I'm using this technology um, so those are kind of my biggest my biggest known points uh, the one who's allergic to syntax and semicolons. <laughs> I like, I like that. Well, that's that short. That's a good elevator pitch for it. But I just, you know, and I, I'm sure you, you have the kind of the same uh, recollection of the history, like, uh, you know, 10 years ago, starting to go to a lot of the SharePoint events and uh, we'd see each other at events, you know, all over the U.S. certainly, but other events around the world. Um, and it was very dev and admin centric. And there was just a handful of us that were end user, power user focused. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that group is, has uh, expanded, but so is the opportunity because as you see, you know, obviously we don't just work with SharePoint, it's uh, you know, across Microsoft 365. And uh, I find myself talking as much about the Office apps as I do about Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive totally. and Hammer, you know, and it's, it's all cross workload stuff and it's, you know, scenarios, but it's, uh, you know, as you see the broader adoption and, and as Microsoft 365, Office 365 uh, have taken off, just exploded globally, um, the people that are showing up to these events that we had before the current era um, were more business user, users, power oh, users. Oh, totally, yeah. And, and it's neat, I mean, it's everything now. I mean, one of the last uh, sessions I was doing with my team, we were out there, it was, you know, working remotely post COVID. And we had a whole session we were doing and it was talking about how um, now when you're in meetings, you have this new thing that's called a hybrid meeting. And you have to be able to have some people that are gonna all be in a room together and you're gonna have some people that are gonna be remote. So how do you share a whiteboard now? You can't share the whiteboard that's in the room because people are gonna feel left out. And how do you watch people's faces if they're wearing a face mask because you're sitting in a room together? And so it's how do you use the technology to overcome some of those challenges? That has nothing to do with you know, really anything technology. It has everything to do with whatever things we're facing in life right now. And so that's end users. And so there can be as many end user consultants as there need to be because there's more end users and there ever are developers or admins. So I say the more the merrier. So the more you could do with SharePoint out of the box, it's fantastic. So SharePoint, Office 365, Teams. I mean, we're getting to a point where you're just using Microsoft 365. Am I using Teams? Am I using Planner? Am I using SharePoint page? Who knows? Who cares? What are you using? It doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. Half the time the user couldn't tell you what they're using. Just use it. <laughs> Right. It's really easy. Just use it. Um, so uh, how do you think, I think you made a great point that, the, hey, this stuff is changing. Um, what do you think the, I mean, we've seen huge numbers of, of course, you know, you and I, uh, MVPs and RDs are very uh, interested in uh, looking at the monthly active users and the other stats that come out from Microsoft. A lot of end users, they don't care about that. They're caring more about what is the actual change that we're experiencing? What what, I mean, what are your predictions of what this is going to look like six months from now, 12 months from now? Not the disease part, the COVID world of that, but the impact. Let's say that there is a, you know, we, there's a magic shot everybody gets and, and the COVID's no longer an issue. What's been the impact and what will business and the normal office workers role and activities look like? Well, I think it's jumpstarting us into the future, right? And so the future is gonna change us anyway. Automation is coming. There's gonna be things that we're used to doing now that we're not gonna be doing the same way in two to three years. And humans just in nature, we're adverse to change. We're not 
naturally going to go towards change. So there's going to be these huge change efforts. We're going to have to bring up entire workforces to be able to do things differently. And that's just the nature of what was coming. If you're following trends, that was going to come by 2023. Everything was going to be different. And then COVID comes and everyone has to sit in their house for three months. It was, Jennifer, it was the burn, it was, it was the burning of the ships. Yes, like, we it was, can't go back. <laughs> yeah, it's like everything's changed. Yeah. And now when you deal with people in change, it's almost like, yep, like it's, it's sh like, so there's a, there's a, the wall of change and the technology and having to do things different. I mean, my parents who would never, ever do anything online. I mean, they're going to go to the store to buy everything. We'll shop on Amazon now and they'll order groceries remotely and they'll do all of these things that they wouldn't typically do because the change forced them to behave differently. So I think with that, it's, it's forced people to behave differently. I was reading a study this week that says only 5% of people that are working from home are working home distraction free. That means 95% of people are distracted. And that can be, um, the distractions included children, husbands, and dogs, and dogs and cats, animals. And I'm like, yeah. okay, yep, everybody's yeah. distracted. So now we have to learn how to work distracted. So we have to learn how to use technology differently. How am I gonna work when my kids are running in and saying something doesn't work, I need to do something for school? Um, how am I gonna just work differently? So we've all had to learn to work differently. So now when we come back to the work environment, I think we're gonna be bringing that with us. I don't think anyone's gonna come back in and expect it to be different. I think we're gonna expect it to be a little bit um, different or we're not gonna expect it to be the same. So I think we can use that as these change agents, we can use that as a chance to make things easier for people and really throw that technology in there. And we've seen something that I think has been amazing is we've seen Microsoft rise to the challenge and roll things out in terms of features inside of Teams to make things easier at a rate that I didn't even think was possible. I don't think some of those teams engineers have slept since COVID came um, to roll out some of these features to make it easier, uh, like the, the feature for vacuums. I'm pretty sure that probably got put in the first time executives were on the phone and somebody was vacuuming and said, why don't we have a feature that clears that out? You know, like yeah, that back rolling no noise, the AI that dampens yeah. those other sounds is fantastic. I think because we've all experienced, I have two little dogs. And, and so I'm doing a lot of recordings and I'm always just like watching, especially one, the Chihuahua, <laughs> you know, like what's he going to do to make sure that it's, he's quiet. Cause otherwise there's, you'll see me, it might be you talking and the, he goes off and I hit mute as quick as possible. You get that little, in there and all grimace you know <laughs> like oh got it he snuck in he just had to be on camera um but yeah there's great features like that i mean the together mode which i know a lot of people say it's yeah it's very gimmicky and stuff if you like i've started to use it for larger it meetings just to see the view. More. it is really nice so that you're you're not having to, to focus around but just kind of see everybody in context there is something in the brain that looks at that view differently than the boxes. Um, it, it's, uh, it, so it's, it's crazy uh, how that works. What other things, what uh, do you think that uh, uh, other, other techniques or other changes that you think you'll see in your own work habits? Um, I think work from home. I think a lot of companies, even um, my husband's, recently uh, within the last two years had been looking for a job and so he had been in the job hunt and so we had been looking around and there were a lot of companies in especially like North Dallas that needed a, a butt in a chair and if you didn't have a butt in a chair you weren't working and now I'm like is that going to stay the same look at how much money you can save with real estate if you just let some people work from home and how much traffic is less. And I, I, I think I just, there's an article like it. I think it was the wall street journal that just had an article yesterday, I believe, or, or maybe Sunday about that, that a lot of people are saying, you know, why do we need to live in the San Francisco Bay area for tech? Like it, it, uh, I'm born and raised there. I've been in a number of startups and, and there's not, I would say, I was about to say there's not enough money in the world to, bring me back there there, there always is. is oh there, there is. is yeah yeah but uh <laughs> but uh, it, realistically yeah no one's going to offer me what i would uh demand to be to move back 
but it, 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 I think one of the biggest impacts from, uh, from this experience for us uh, globally, it's an impact, is to commercial real estate. A lot yeah. of companies that have, there's, there are all the time, there are just dozens of companies that have announced to the world, you know, we've decided we can always be remote. We don't need to ever, we're going to shut down our physical office. We don't need it. Yeah. We can do yeah. this. And there's a time and a place for it. I get that. And so we'll, you know, there's a, a blending for it or maybe a blended workforce. So I think those are going to be some of the changes we're definitely going to see, but it's better for all of these companies that say they're going to have a zero, uh, zero, uh, why can't I think, like a carbon green footprint. footprint. Yeah, yeah, zero carbon footprint by a certain year. Yeah. Well, I bet you working from home is going to be a big part of that because that's a great way to reduce the emissions and, you know, cut the gas expenditures and cut what you have to pay people. Let's be honest, if yeah. they're working from home and they're not commuting and they're not having to sit in traffic for hours, I mean, just think about how, how much happier you are. And I mean, there's other studies that talk about there's disadvantages of it too. There's no more nine to five is gone. There's no right. more work day. It's, it's get up, work a little bit, get the kids to school, come work back and work, bit. do dinner, then go back and work a little right. bit. Yeah. It's even, um, I mean, even more so than that, because they, they say that, look, every, every hour of sitting in front of the screens, you, then you should get up for 10 minutes and do something else. And I mean, you see adjustments and even with inspire, uh, this last month and Ignite coming up, they're talking about rather than going in and seeing like a 50 to 60 minute or even, you know, for a lot of the events that we've done over the years that used to be 75 minutes of sessions with Q&A and all of that, they want those reduced down to 40, 30, 20 minute sessions. So you get these, I keep First, using the word yeah. vignettes of a, a topic and then have more conversations, more panel, more discussion, more interaction. And so that's something that I think a lot of companies, to your point, will bring back to say like, well, you know, even if we are physically in the office, um, fewer meetings or these hybrid meetings, they need to yeah, be shorter totally. and focused. Um, it's going to change a lot about that. And I think that's a, that's a good thing. So even if you do have to physically be there, let's focus on the core of why we need these 10 people online and the 20 people in person to go through this. Let's keep it efficient and then get back to doing our jobs. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so I think it's neat. I think it's it's an interesting time, something we've never lived through, but something that is is interesting. Like it's definitely gonna impact, impact the future to come. We'll, we'll remember when. <laughs> right, yeah, as we, yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah. I, that's the word I keep using too, is interesting. We live in interesting times. That's why it's, <laughs> it's, that, it's that Chinese curse of may you live in interesting times. So we're, we're cursed right now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're old. I think that's yeah, what well, old people say, Christian. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that, that's true. What about you? I'm an, I, yeah, okay. I, I, but uh, no, I, I, I don't, is there a talk about, no, I have a, I have a grandchild now. So yeah, I feel old every once in a while. So it catches up. So, well, Jennifer, really appreciate the time today. If people want to find out more about you or get in touch with you, what are the best ways that they can reach you? Um, so they can get me at Twitter, so at Jennifer Mason, and then o365support.com is uh, one of our Planet websites where we have a lot of um, a lot of content material, and then jenniferandmason.com is my blog. So a couple of easy places to easy places to find me. I'm not too hard to find. <laughs> and you have your vlog <laughs> podcast as well, the one that you do with uh, Adam oh, and Tom. Oh yeah. And, so yeah. every week we do the Office 365 Pulse. I can't believe I forget about that. I think I create aided that one out of my own uh, frustration of needing to find the updates and so we do a is that like an extension of what we of what we used to do like because i did the collab talk podcast and you did the pulse back for yes. it unity yes we used to do the pulse for it unity and then we brought it back reformatted it so i scrub through the roadmap every week and i actually have a process where i i download and save the roadmap week to week and then do a differential on it and find changes and then highlight them for you um so you know it so we have a newsletter that we post and then we we do a little show where we talk about what the changes are um 
and, and kind of highlight them with what they're at and then show what, what environment they're to. So whether it's DOD or GCC high or GCC or just enterprise cloud. So we try to do the best we can to keep up with, keep up with that. And so we do that every week. And so that's the Office 365 Pulse. Is that on, is that a, a, a blog, a site, or is that on YouTube? Um, it's or? just a YouTube channel. So if yeah. they search that on YouTube, they'll be able to find us pretty easy. Or if they go to any of the other places that we mentioned, they'll find it. Yeah, it, it's uh, pretty much, I think it's, uh, if you put, type in Jennifer and SharePoint, you'll find Jennifer Mason. Yeah. Yes, it's not hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, really appreciate your time. It's great talking to you and catching up, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Yes, thank you so much. Wow! Wow!